an email about mm, a couple days ago, and I thought, that is so interesting. We invited Monica Seidel, who is part of a community-led restoration project, to make sure that walleye, pike, and bass on the Olmstead Jeffrey Lakes have more places to live thanks to this restoration project. Monica, how are you today? I'm great. How are you? Good, thanks. How did you come up with the idea for this? Is this, is this something that, that, is, that is needed? Because a lot of people out there wouldn't even think twice about this. Absolutely. So this was really community-led, identified by volunteers on the Muscat Watershed Council and the Olmstead Jeffrey Lake Association. And they saw the need to restore fish habitat on their two lakes. And so it was a community effort to pull together uh, 27 members from the community came out and what we call them brush piles. And so we're gathering together woody debris that's on the land and building them into piles and then putting them back in the lake so that there is habitat cover for those different species of fish you mentioned. And they use these areas to rest and spawn, hide from the sun, and escape predators. So, because the, the picture that I got, I saw a bunch of people standing around, and I thought to myself, oh, you know, th this must be the, the bunch of organizers and, and volunteers who have come together. And I read the article, and I thought, oh, right, because then when you look more closely, you see those piles that they have all kind of put together in order to, to give these, you know, creatures and animals a, a, a safer environment. Absolutely. So those brush piles are about six feet long and maybe uh, two or so feet tall. And so we're just gathering a whole bunch of woody debris, snags, branches, twigs off of the land and putting them back into the water. And this is because people often unknowingly will, quote, clean up the water around their property. They want it to have a certain aesthetic look. And so that woody debris, like leaves or branches, aren't falling into the water naturally. And so we're able to work with different community partners to ensure that that woody debris is going back into the lake in safe spots that aren't going to hit by boat traffic or anything like that, but can still benefit the local fish population. And, like, how do you keep these piles together? Do you, do you tie them together with, like, some string or something? Yeah, so we tie them together with marine ropes so it doesn't deteriorate with the UV light. And then they're anchored to blocks so that they stay on the bottom of the lake and they're not going to rise up and pose a hazard. You're kidding. I mean, you, you thought of everything. Here I was thinking it was just, you know, some of this and some of that and off you go. But there's there's really a lot of work that's going into this. Yeah, so we've been piloting these projects for about five years now on different lakes and rivers across eastern Ontario, and we've actually been able to work with a number of partners to create a fish habitat enhancement toolkit, and so other community groups can use this toolkit and the video protocols in order to restore the fish habitat on their lake. And, and what are some of the benefits that you're seeing from your, your hard work? Absolutely. So we go back to our kind of spots where we drop the brush bundles after a couple of years and we have the ability to gather underwater video footage and see what species are actually using those brush piles. So it's really lovely to see, you know, different species actually using these areas to rest and to hide and that they're able to rebound the populations in those areas because they have these natural areas. I think that's wonderful that you, it, it's one of those initiatives that you can actually see your, your hard work and dedication pay off over the course of years, you know? Absolutely. So it's usually a one-day event. So you have everyone come together from the community to build these piles. You're going out on the boat to deploy them. And then you can come back year after year. A lot of volunteer associations will do fish counts so they can tangibly see the difference that they're making locally and see those fish populations rebound. This is really wonderful. Are you, are you currently looking for volunteers? So we are not looking for volunteers just yet. We are always open to different lake associations or community groups reaching out to us if they think that they could benefit from a different fish habitat project. Okay. And people can also, like I said, lead their own because of those free resources that are on our website. So 
Uh, they can go there for different handouts and information and also learn more about our program. And they can do that by visiting our website, which is watershed with an S at the end, dot CA. And then people can kind of like, 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 it, is there a way to, to have like a, like a community board where they say, hey, you know, we tried this and this really seemed to work or, or like trade ideas and, and things? Yeah, so we can act as kind of a central spot for that. We often host webinars and forums where people can talk about what works on their lake, what hasn't. There's also an annual workshop that is delivered in the fall called Lake Link. And that's another place where communities can come together and talk about what's going on on their lake, the problems they're seeing, and the different solutions they're trying to implement. I think that's fabulous. You guys are doing a great job. And I, I love the fact that you get all this done within like one day. You guys just, just hit the water and that's it. Right to it. It's really the support from the community and also uh, different funders who make these projects possible. So this specific one was possible because of the Bass Pro Shops and Cabela's Outdoor Fund and also the Pembroke Petawawa District Community Foundation. So this community on the ground support is the only way that these projects are possible. Is there anything we can do to help? Do you, do you need anything from us? I think if people are interested in learning about the Fish Habitat Project, we also do walleye and trout spawning bed restorations and brook trout habitat uh, restorations along Coldwater Creek. And we're always open to trying out new habitat programs. So if people have ideas or problems that they're seeing on their lake, we'd really just encourage them to go to our website and contact us. And we can find ways to try and help you out or at least point you in the right direction of some people who are doing amazing work in your area. I'm, I'm so impressed with the work that you you, you folks are doing. It's, it's, it's wonderful to see that, you know... On behalf of all the, 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 the folks out there who are trying to get back to nature and, and, and you know, want to take part in this, you know, thanks so much for all your, your, your great help. It's, it's like you said, you, you can actually see the results. Absolutely, and we want to say thank you to, you know, all of those different groups that came together. And same thing, they want to take local action, and they're working together to make sure that happens. So we're thank so thankful to the community and the funders who make these projects possible. Monica, thanks so much for taking the time to chat with us. That was really interesting. Yes, thank you so much for having us on. Hey, have a great rest of the day. You as well. Okay, take care. That is Monica Seidel from Watersheds Canada doing some great work out there. If you want to find out more information, go to watersheds, that's with an S, watersheds with an S, dot C-A.